Hello friends and welcome to another episode of the Urban Homesteading Channel, Weekend Edition. If today is the first time you're visiting with us, we want to extend you a very warm welcome and invite you to watch any of our over 560 episodes arranged for your convenience in playlists as we are confident you're going to find something both useful and entertaining to watch. If you've been here before, welcome back. If today is your birthday, we want to wish you a very happy birthday. we're building furniture well kind of we're going to take a 2 by 12 and it was 8 feet long and we're going to turn it into a campfire chair or what is the other name we, you found bog chair what people refer to as a bog chair so stick around and we're going to show you how to turn one of these into one of these is that the Let's cut another piece. Yep. This dimension. Yep. So let's cut that one. Okay. Isn't this a eight foot board? Yes. Mm -hmm. So X. six and then two. Yep. Three, six. Well, I, I thought it would oh. be bigger. So in one of our two boards, specifically what will become the back, we have marked rather carefully, and unlike the mode of the channel we had to measure, an opening that the seat we're going to, to be in, right? Mm -hmm. Now the opening has to be exactly the dimension of your wood. In our case it was one and a half. Dimension and lumber varies, so don't take that as the measurement. You need to measure your actual wood, and actually technically we should have measured that one because that's inserted, but hopefully it's the same board. So it it is the same board. We cut it in half. Well, yeah, no, I mean, hopefully <laughs> since it's the same board, it's going to work okay. And this dimension is 7.25, right? Our width. Mm -hmm. And the difference, the two sides, we want them approximately equal. And that is... One and seven eighths. One and seven eighths. So... Uh, this is not critical to be identical, but you want them close enough, right? right. So it looks like it's in the middle. If it's this is middle. if this is too open, too wide, in either dimension, you're going to get a floppiness to the chair. If it is too tight, you won't be able to put it in, which can be a problem. Yeah, That's a big problem. That's a big problem. So there are many ways to do that. And uh, you can use a plunge router to take this off. You need to go all the way through the, the whole wood. Or we're going to use, because most people have a jigsaw but they don't necessarily have a plant router, we're going to use our jigsaw to do this. So stick around and we're going to have fat, fat, <laughs> fun cutting with our jigsaw. It's a little too wide, but that's okay. So bring it in a little further. So what we're doing is drilling some holes so that the blade of the jigsaw is going to have a way to get into the board. And this is a pretty substantial drill bit, uh, but we want to make sure that our blade has clearance to do what it needs to do. Uh, 
that moved a little bit, but we should be able to still do it. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. And the first test of the what brand are those was pretty good. Um, this is not plugged in yet. You mean electrical equipment needs to be plugged in? We have discovered this weird quirky thing about electrical appliances. Um, okay, this is weird. Yeah, no, okay, I had to plug this because I had to work on the okay, so plate. Okay. Let's check setting, it's kind of slow. Just tiresome. Okay. It's very thick wood, you know? Yeah, okay. All right, we're going to do the same throughout and we seem to be reasonably close to our line. Yeah, that was actually a really good cut. Looks like you're right on it and it went right into well, our clearance. The laser so, helps. Yeah, the laser does help. That's a nice feature on this one. So uh, this one, you might want to come from this way just because you kind of overshot this a little bit. So that would line it up. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Okay. Well, <laughs> it looked good until it doesn't want to go through, right? Yeah. Well, a little percussion persuasion. There we go. But a beautiful piece. And this is our final product. Yes. <laughs> this is what we've all been waiting for. Right. No, not really. We cut now, that piece out of the middle of the board. We could have used the plunge cut with our... Uh, the plunge router. No, the plunge oh. router. Or little, I don't oh, know what the, call it. the tack light song? The tack light, yeah. Mm -hmm. This okay. is all right. This did this did a good job. The only thing you'll notice um, if you're not familiar with the jigsaws is that they don't go very fast, but right. it makes a pretty nice clean cut, especially if you've got. A well, yeah, I mean, blade look at the it. cut here. Yeah. The cut is very, very good. You got a decent blade, so it, it requires very little cleanup in terms of your opening there. We might have to clean this a little yeah, bit and this a little thinking. bit, but you know. So the next part, uh, we're thinking to. This? To care of this, but I was saying th this would be the only tool we can do it with, and that's kind of slow. But anyway, we're going to figure it out, and we'll be right back.
the blade. Now we need to mark that on the other side because I have to turn it. So let's. So do you want to see what we just did? Okay, we're cutting the side so we can have the middle part that's going to be inserted into our bag. Mm -hmm. And the reason we stop, as you notice, before our line is because the saw. Actually, if, if we stop here, it would have cut way through in here. So Because of the curve of the right, blade. Right, because of the curve. So we're going to finish with our jigsaw. And you can see what it did over here. Yeah, where is Which that is we, a different right. stop point. Because of the it was at the right. bottom of the blade, not at the top. Right. Exactly. But I think we actually lucked out, and it's probably right on point. Well, we're going to see. So we're going to set for the jigsaw again. Jigsaw, yeah. You're not on the line. I'm getting there. Okay. Yeah. And the reason this looks like this is because the curve of the uh, the curve of the jigsaw is substantially smaller than the curve of the table saw, the blade. Yeah, I was trying to decide if I should be in and out. Probably I should have been more in, but that's easy to fix. Okay. Okay. So next, we're going to to decide on some beautification elements, and we're going to do it first. Try to see how off we are in our opening. So we have very, very little adjustment to make. I don't know if it's even visible. Well, I don't think it's even an eight in areas, right? Right. We have a little bit here and a very little bit there. And we're going to use our, I'll call it a file sander. I don't know what the correct name is, but that's what I'm going with. Okay. And we're going to use our final file sander to do that. Probably shouldn't have it on its side. It would be hard to do it that way unless we turn it. Yeah, okay. Well, then you can't see the there. line that you made. Yeah. I know. 
power. Is it plugged in? Yes. Do the top and the bottom? No, because they're already too wide. So for some reason. Okay. okay. So we want to test it. Yes. Really close. There's a little bit more over here that needs to come off. Just the whole line of it. And I think the same on that side. Just a little bit more. Yes. Yes, no? I don't know. Let's try. Well, I didn't do this side, so I don't know. It might have been enough. Like at this point, I think it's just the cup of the board that's cutting a little bit, but we're, we're really right there. So just a little bit off on either side, both sides. Oh. To add an element of interest in our design and break the angular overall look of the piece, we are going to put a little bit of curve on both the seat and the top of the back and we use just a, a stain can for this uh, angle. To trace our curve. Mm -hmm. And we are going to use, unfortunately for me, the jigsaw and probably a little bit of sanding. Yeah. Let's, let's I lost it. I couldn't see it. Mm -hmm. You want me to get it somewhere? No, it's we, close. Can, we, can, mm -hmm. we can probably. Okay. What do I want it to be at? This is faster, but that's you. Can you do it again, honey? We can stand. 
Well, actually, it's very smooth here. It's just I'm a little mm -hmm. out of the, you know, the curve. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's been, if it is visible, to be honest. Getting better. Okay. Okay. So now you want me to sand those to clean those up? Like this side's a little high, okay. like it stops mm -hmm. and then it, it meets it this mm -hmm. at an angle. Okay. So this. Yep. <laughs> So do you want to, here we are, we finished with our uh, making our curves and again we did the same uh, curves on both the seat, which is this part and the, the back which is this part and we are going to Suzuki ban it for a finish because a lot of its time it will be spent outside and if a little rain hits it uh, the Japanese used Suzuki Bank initially as a weather protection, not as a stylistic uh, finish. Now it has become more of a stylistic finish, but still it prepares the wood to be fairly weather uh, resistant. Yeah, weather resistant. So let us set it up and we'll be right back. So these pieces came from the store with a little bit of mud on them. And uh, we're using a wet cloth to remove the mud. Why we're doing that, Elpida? Because if you don't, then it won't burn correctly. The mud will get in the way. And we don't want burn mud, we want burn wood. Right. Wouldn't that though make it burn slower? Because the wood is wet now? I think it's going to get dry pretty quick. Okay. <laughs> So we're going to 
uh, apply the Suzuki band finish before we actually uh, do the final assembly. But most of the construction has at this moment been completed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So stick around, we're going to show you a little bit of the Suzuki band process and then we'll be right with you. So this is also good for protecting wood against insects, right? Yes.
Okay, so we are done with the, the finish, the Suzuki band, burning the burning, and now we're going to use a brush and uh, take uh, the fine particles of the burn mm -hmm. off. So you have to do that. Highly recommend wear a mask uh, because there's a lot of really fine particles, as you can see right away. Definitely wear a mask if you are not outside like we are. But even outside, recommend you wear one just to keep yourself safe. This is in essence carbon, burnt carbon, right? Yep. I mean, mm -hmm. so your lungs will thank you. And for us, this was the longest uh, Suzuki band we have done yeah. as far as the piece, you know, the, the biggest surface, I guess. I don't know how visible it is on the camera, but you can see the fine dust. Yeah. So we're going to do that to both pieces and uh, we are going to be right back. So one of the neat things is that you can see when, uh, when it is apart, it's fairly compact and easy to store, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, you can put it in a set very easily. So we, we like this aspect of it, right? You can put like a cord around it or something and... Mm -hmm. Cool. But he has to be persuaded, I'm sure. Not as much as you would think. There we go. Fireside chair, though. That's what I was envisioning. It's really oh. nice for the fire, right? I don't know what you two are doing. I'm taking it up. <laughs> it's that comfy. I I think it is. You should try it. I mean, I think it is pretty okay. good. Do you I thought you were recording. Me? I am. Okay. Okay. The camera was pointing one direction. You were looking another direction. So I was trying to figure out. So here it is, guys. I mean, you know. Mm -hmm. I think my calculations was correct. What do you think? You Oops. can change the angle by changing the length of the back piece, right? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So, but I think the way I calculate it seems pretty, pretty good right now. Yeah, it looks good. And it's pretty darn solid since it's a... Oh yeah, it doesn't move at all when you hit it. Yeah. And I'm not the lightest guy in the universe. You know? And it's, uh, yeah, it's super solid. It's not going anywhere. Oh, no. Nice. Nice. Right. And I love the finish. Obviously, it's my favorite finish. It is oh. actually pretty nice. I'll just take this home. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like it at all, huh? I'll just take it home. Ooh, it's so nice. You have to try it, love, too. So here is our chair. We built it out of one piece of, uh, of wood. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are some great benefits out of this. First of all, even though it's wood, it can stay outside because we use Suzuki Bank to weatherproof it or winterize it or whatever the protect it. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it is uh, a nice. Uh, I don't know. Would, would you say you had fun with this project? It is a nice project. Yeah, it's an afternoon project. Fairly um, straightforward, uh, as long as you got your measurements right. Well, it requires some patience, though. Mm -hmm. Take a seat. Speaking of measurements, if you want me to show you measurements of this, just send me an email, and I will be happy to do that. And it's very solid. Nice. Well, yeah, it feels perfect. I mean, it just it doesn't move, it doesn't mm -hmm. wobble. It is amazing. So, while I'm taking a nap, let Alpida and Miss uh, <laughs> Wizard uh, build this chair for you. <laughs> so stick around. So this is our finished project for today. And uh, what do you would say is a, a good estimate? Two, three hours? Yeah. And primarily is because you need to pay, it is important that the dimensions are correct on this, right? Mm -hmm. If you have them too loose, the chair will be kind of loose. Right. And you don't want that. And uh, 
you can embellish it different ways. For example, you could put some uh, stencils here. Yeah, you could do a lot of things. Wood carving. We chose to do the shusugi ban because it is a weatherproofing uh, finish. But you could definitely do other things with it if you wanted to. And that, of course, is going to add or subtract to your time depending on how you're finishing. And of course, this is a repeatable project, so you can buy more pieces of wood and make more chairs anytime you want, right? Right. Now, in our area, this board cost about $24, $25, yes, something $24. Like that. So, uh, I don't know what it will cost in your area, and, and currently, because of COVID, the price, prices of lumber have gone ridiculous, right? Yes. But not as ridiculous as Alpida found a chair almost like this on Pinterest. Want to talk about that? Yeah, well, the first one I found was like $280, but then another one that I found, which I obviously had much less done to it than this, it was basically two boards they'd cut and then just kind of sliced together. <laughs> they were asking almost $1,000 for. So I think that $25 was not a bad investment. For no, us. not at all. And a few hours of our time. This was for me more of a, a, a proof of concept. I really thought I had an original idea, but then Alpida burst my bubble. <laughs> <laughs> that this apparently exists and it even has a name a bog chair a bog chair so there you go guys you know i didn't mean to copy anyone but apparently i did and uh, as i was working on it we actually got some ideas about making some uh, either a bench or a table to match this so mm -hmm. in the future we, we will show you that right right we'll probably make a couple of more chairs Mm -hmm. like this yeah these are nice like i said for the fire pit yeah or even here for the deck i mean yeah it yeah. is i don't want to say surprisingly comfortable because i thought it would be comfortable but when you look at it you wouldn't think it's as comfortable as it actually is yeah you think it's a pretty simple chair and and gonna be kind of hard and rough but it really is not so we hope you enjoyed this episode and if you did please give us a thumbs up if you didn't the other button works as well share like subscribe let us know what else you would like to see in our channel. From Dr. Wizard, Mrs. Wizard, Elpida, and the Urban Home Studying Channel, stay safe, wash your hands, put your mask on, and we're going to see you again midweek with another episode. Farewell, friends.